On the 15th of June, 2019, one of the world's most famous, longest, toughest, and most challenging endurance races will occur. The 24 Hours of Le Mans. The 24 Hours of Le Mans takes place in the city of Le Mans, France, and involves non-stop racing for 24 hours from start to finish. Of all the manufacturers to enter this race over the years, the most successful is Porsche, with 19 overall race wins at Le Mans. 50 years ago, in 1969, the car that would give Porsche its first ever overall win at Le Mans was created. The legendary Porsche 917. In 1968, the World Sports Car Championship, which governed racing at Le Mans, introduced an engine capacity limit of 3 liters in an attempt to slow down the increasingly fast and often dangerous sports cars that raced at Le Mans. There was, however, a caveat in the rules for 1969, in which a manufacturer could race a car with a 5-liter engine if the manufacturer built 25 examples of the car for purchase. It was with this rule that Porsche decided to build a completely new car based on its 908 platform to compete for the overall win at Le Mans. In 10 months, Porsche developed the 917, a car which was significantly different to anything else Porsche had developed before. The 917 had a rear mid-engined 4.5 liter air-cooled flat 12, the first 12-cylinder engine Porsche had ever developed, which produced 520 horsepower. package the car tightly with the massive engine, the driver of the 917 sat in a very forward position where the driver's feet were in front of the front axle. The car itself was made from an extremely light aluminum frame that weighed only 45.4 kilograms and utilized a fiberglass body to save weight. The 917 also used other extreme weight-saving measures, such as a gear shift knob made from balsa wood. All of these lightweight components made the 917 very light, weighing a mere 800 kilograms in total. The 917 also featured other innovative features, such as the usage of the tubular frame itself as an oil pipe system, and active aerodynamic elements, such as a variable rear wing. All of these elements led to insane performance figures from a car of the late 1960s. The 917 could go from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 2.5 seconds and was capable of a top speed of 240 miles per hour. As the 1969 season carried on, it became clear that the Porsche 917 had a lot of problems. In spite of its advanced engineering and very good speed, Porsche drivers preferred to race the older 908 because the 917 was extremely unstable and thus was incredibly difficult to drive. The reason the 917 was so unstable was due to the lack of effectiveness of its aerodynamics. Normally, a racing car has elements such as wings to produce downforce to push the car into the ground. The wings on the 917 of 1969, however, produced almost no downforce, and at high speed, the car would actually produce lift. At the 1969 24 Hours of Le Mans, all Porsche 917s entered into the race retired, either from mechanical failures or crashing before the end of the race. Porsche decided to get to the bottom of the 917's problems for 1970 and developed the car further at the Österreich Ring in Austria. There, the Porsche engineers noticed that dead bugs covered the windscreen, but not the tail of the car. They deduced that the reason why there were no dead bugs on the tail of the car was because it was not interacting with the air, 
and thus not producing any downforce. The Porsche engineers proceeded to create a new, shorter tail for the 917, and thus the Porsche 917K was born. K stood for Kurzsek, German for short tail. It became clear during the 1970 season that the 917K was significantly easier to drive and had more stability than the previous generation of 917. In the 1970 24 Hours of Le Mans, the number 23 Porsche 917K, driven by Richard Atwood and Hans Hermann, won Porsche's first ever overall victory at Le Mans. The 917 would also go on to win nine of the ten races of the 1970 season to win the World Championship of Makes. For 1971, Porsche developed the already amazingly fast 917K further. They introduced a new tail section that was less upswept than the 1970 version, but featured two large vertical fins at either side, keeping air over the top of the tail. This new tail allowed for more downforce to be produced with less drag. Porsche also worked on a low drag body for the 917 creating the 1971 version of the 917L. L stood for Langheck, German for long tail. The 917L was incredibly stable at high speeds and was so stable that the drivers could take their hands off the steering wheel at speeds of 240 miles per hour, a massive improvement from the original 917. In 1971, the Porsche 917 would go on to win eight of the ten races, with Porsche winning the World Championship of Makes for the second consecutive year. At the 1971 24 Hours of Le Mans, the number 22 917K, driven by Jais van Lennep and Helmut Marko, would go on to win the race, setting a distance record of 5,335 kilometers, or 3,107.7 miles, a distance record that stood until 2010. For 1972, the World Sports Car Championship mandated that all cars have three liter engines, essentially outlawing the Porsche 917. However, the Porsche 917 had already paved the way for Porsche to become the most successful manufacturer at the 24 hours of Le Mans. With the release of the movie Le Mans by Steve McQueen, the 917 also became a legend, and is one of the most recognizable racing cars of all time. Today, in 2019, we celebrate the achievements of this extraordinary racing car on its 50th anniversary. I'm Hewitt Cherry, and thanks for watching.